Okay, today I'm going to make a short video for this question. Yeah, one of my students actually asked me how to solve this question. So, yes. Oh, so this is like, I think the SPM MF for quadratic function is from four third chapter, is, is, if not mistaken. Alright, so this question is quite simple. First thing is, the first question you have to understand is the completing the square. So for the first question, you have to understand this one, you have to do completing the square. Alright, I hope you understand how to do completing the square. If not, you can go and find out my video about completing the square. And then the second part, of course you have to know how to sketch the graph. Alright, of course you have to know how to sketch the graph. Alright, and then the last part is you have to know how to find exit symmetric. Alright, exit symmetric. Right, so over here completing the square is just a method. So it's nothing much about completing the square. This is just a method. So yeah, of course, I here I will write, roughly write out the general form of uh, completing the square. You have something like y equals to a and then x minus h square plus k. Okay, this is the ge general equation for completing the square because the purpose of completing the square is to get maximum or minimum point and then it's, it will help you to like sketch the graph so from here you have two choice when a when this is a value when a is positive you will get minimum point which is h, h and k all right h and k all right if a is less than zero means the a is negative like this case later you see a is negative you will get maximum point and the maximum coordinate is the same is h and k also all right so even you uh you after you did the completing the square you still need to careful whether the a is positive or negative all right so yeah so over here you say hang state the maximum or minimum value so this is how we decide maximum or minimum value so it's very important it's totally is based on a value okay you must be careful on a your a is very important in this case then the second part you have to understand how to sketch the graph so sketch the, sketch the graph in SPM mostly they only want the turning point which is maximum or minimum point all right then the question will also want you to like uh, plot the y-intercept okay you also need to know how to do y-intercept all right somehow you sketch the graph the question gives you like four or five mark maybe you have to do the x-intercept also all right you maybe you have to do the x-intercept also but x-intercept here I would say is is optional Mean, means it is not compulsory but these two for maximum or minimum point and y intercept is compulsory all right of course over here you must understand how to find the x intercept you want to find the x intercept you have i mean you want to find the y intercept you have to make your x equal to zero because all the coordinate on the y exit you can see all the coordinate on the y exit this is y exit x is equal to zero their x will be 0, maybe 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 1. So all the coordinate on the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So you let x equal to 0, mean you substitute 0, zero into all the x, you can easily find your y-intercept. Same thing happened to x-intercept. You have to make your y equals to 0. Because on x-intercept, mean everything in the uh, x-axis, let's say this x-axis, you got 1, 0, and then 2, and then 2, 0, and then 3, 0, and continue. So you can find all their y is 0. Okay, this is something very important. You have to understand this one in order to find the x-intercept or y-intercept. Okay, last but not least is the uh, axis symmetric. Axis symmetric, uh, you know you can easily get the axis symmetric from, from this uh, completing the square equation. So, we can get the axis symmetric from the uh, from the expression inside the bracket. So let's say, just for example, let's say I have y equals to three of uh, x minus four square plus five. Let's say this is just an example. So we we get the axis symmetric in from here. All right, means uh, I bet okay let, again x minus four square. Yeah, we will get the axis symmetric from here. 
So if x minus 4 means what? You just assume x minus 4 equals to 0, x will equal to 4. Okay, this one is the axis symmetric. Okay, if this is x minus 5, so x will equal to 5. However, for axis symmetric, you also need to understand another thing is axis sym symmetric always, I would say always, he will always passing through maximum or minimum point. Passing through, uh, okay, always passing through maximum or minimum point. Okay, you must understand about this one, it's quite important. Okay, so yeah. So for example, uh, okay, I have a graph like this. I, this is just an example. Before I start, I go into the uh, question. I really want you to understand about this one. So this is the, let's say this is a maximum point. So your axis symmetric, you see, this one will be your axis symmetric. And if this coordinate is called, if this coordinate is called, let's, let's say it's called 3, 8. So your axis symmetric obviously is on the, uh, it will touch the x axis, isn't it? So this equation we know is called x equal to 3. Okay, no matter your point is maximum or minimum, axis symmetric always are passing through the maximum or minimum point, and it's always same value. I mean the 3 here is always same with the uh, x, I mean the x value of the maximum or minimum point. Okay, you have to understand this one. Because axis symmetric is normally is just one mark in the exam. So I really hope you can understand. Alright. So yeah, I hope my explanation do help you a bit. Then we come into this question. So in order to do this question, first thing I will copy down the uh, I will copy down the e e equation. So I have okay, I will let y equals fx because it's easier for me. Okay, y will equal to negative two x squared plus six x plus five. Okay, the first step is I need to do the completing the square. So we just do the completing the square. It's very simple. You just make, sh make sure your x squared equals to 1. So if you have negative 2 here, you just factorize here, negative 2 out. Normally, I factorize for first and second term. Of course, you can factorize for first, second, and third term. But normally, I would just do for first and second. Yeah, you'll get the same result. You, you don't need to worry. Okay, so I will do like this. Then, the next step is... I will, I will actually divide 2 for my B. This is just assume this is A, this is B. So B will divide 2. So the first and second term you just copy. And then here you have to write something plus, something square, minus back, something square, and then close the bracket. Close bracket is very important because later this term have to multiply negative 2 into it. So I have plus 5. And then here, whatever inside the bracket will, will be B over 2. This one assume this is your B. So B over 2 will be negative 3 over 2 negative 3 over 2 and then what I say is here you're going to combine them so this three term you're going to combine something like x square I uh, know x minus 3 over 2 and then square outside because after you expand this one you can get back exactly this three term All right you have to get the idea all right then negative 2 I, I do put the bracket also so this this term is still over here which is 9 over 4 and will be plus 5 Okay, now I expand, which is I multiply the negative 2 into the first one and also the second one. Okay, so I will have y equals to negative 2. Never multiple inside the bracket. I just leave it outside like this. Alright, then negative 2 multiple this one. I will get plus, uh, I will get plus 9 over 2 and then plus 5. Okay, so you know this one is the maximum value because... This is negative 2, right? I say if a, this is a, uh, is less than 0, you will get maximum point. Okay? So you will get maximum. So this one we call maximum value. When questions say about maximum value, you see the word maximum value, it means they want the y value, they want the y value of maximum point. Okay? Y value of maximum point. Okay? You must understand when you see the word value. But however, here I need coordinate, so just ignore about y value first. So yes, this is the last step. Then I done my completing the square. Okay, this one will be 10 over 2, so this is plus 19 over 2. All right, then yeah, this one is what what they call because the question asks you to yeah express this one in this form, right? So you can see I have negative 2 here, and then my p is 3 over 2, and my q will be uh, 19 over 2. All right, so 
yeah, just like that, and hence state the maximum or minimum value of fx and the corresponding values of x. So here is maximum or minimum, right? So because a is negative, so you know this is maximum value. I say maximum value means mean the k. Oh, sorry about this. Your k do not have any square here. So yeah, so k shouldn't have any square. So let me just erase the square here. Oops, my bad. Okay, let me erase it. Okay, plus k. Okay, k is the maximum value. I hope you understand that. And the corresponding values of x mean this one, they want the x value of the maximum point. All right, so after I have done this, so over here, I know this is my maximum value. This is maximum value. And this one, Okay, for corresponding of, okay, let me write maximum value is 19 over 2. And your corresponding value of x, corresponding values of x mean the x value of the maximum. Corresponding value of x will be 3 over 2. Okay, this one means, actually, you have to understand from this equation, you can get your maximum point. Your maximum point will be 3 over 2 and 19 over 2. Just in, just remember for x, they are always opposite in both because you have to do something like x minus 3 over 2 equals to 0 so you have 3 over 2 so this 3 over 2, they will call it corresponding values of, of x and this one, they will call it maximum value alright, if this is positive, this one, they still call the corresponding value of x but this one, they will call minimum value alright, I hope you really can remember this one it's so easy to get marked if you understand about this thing alright, so, we're done about this part okay, then we're going to go to part b part b, they ask us to sketch the graph. So I say sketch the graph, we will need two information. One is maximum point, the other will be your y-intercept. Okay, you will need your y-intercept, and your y-intercept, just now I say, you have to let your x equal to 0 to find it out. So x equals to 0, I'm not going to use this equation to find because I find waste my time, so I use the original equation. Do you see this one? y equals to negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 5. When x equals 0, my y is left 5 only. Do you see that? Okay, so I'm going to erase all this because I do not need it. If you want if you want to see it, you just like see the replay. Okay, so I hope you can remember what I say. Okay, and this one also. Okay, so, yeah, I want to find a y-intercept now, so I let my x equal to 0. So if x equals 0, my y equals to negative 2, 0 squared, plus 6, 0, plus 5. Actually, I can do very fast, uh, I know y equals to 5, it's easily. Alright, so, later my later my curve will going to pass, pass through 0, 5, because this is my y-intercept. Okay, then I can sketch the graph easily by having some information the coordinate for y-intercept and my maximum point okay then if I have all this I can sketch this one easily so I just like randomly sketch give you some idea so let's say this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis alright so of course I will I will plot my maximum point first 3 over 2 assume this is 3 over 2 so it's somewhere here okay I'm going to call it if this is maximum point so here will be 3 over 2 and this one will be uh, 19 over 2 19 over 2 of course you can write that small if you want yeah 9, 19 over 2 I think is 9.5 isn't it yeah you, you can do that but normally I will write 19 over 2 all right and then I know later you're going to passing through uh, 5 here okay so my graph because it's a maximum graph maximum graph will look like this and then you're passing through this point it will be 5 because my y intercept is 5. Of course, if possible, you label this one also. It's 3 over 2 and 19 over 2. Yes, then I done. This is how I sketch the graph. Do you see that? This is how I sketch the graph. I hope you see that. Yes, it's not really hard. If A is, if, I mean, the, this is positive 2, let's say, or any positive value, yeah, your minimum graph will look like this. So, a is decide what is the pattern or what's the shape of the curve. Okay, then you could just find out your coordinate and your x intercept. Most of the students just do not know how to find x intercept. So you just remember when x goes zero, you can easily find your I mean y intercept, sorry, not x intercept. Alright. 
yeah I hope this video can help you oh last but not least the third part they ask you to find the x intercept is very simple uh, x intercept blah. they ask you to find the uh, axis symmetry so axis symmetry I say always you're passing to maximum or minimum point right so this one I'm going to use blue color this one will be my axis symmetry okay I hope without I say you already can guess this one this equation called x equals to 3 over 2 this is the answer for part C part B just ask you to sketch a graph and part A just ask you to do the completing the square all right I hope this video can actually make you understand about this uh, quadratic function for me like this chapter is so easy to score the mark if you can understand this all right I hope you enjoy my video See you again soon.